Celebrations, party, my birthday tomorrow, but that's not why. It's, um, it's been a good day for meditating. You know, it does take you a while to get into it. Like, if you have a few day break, tends to what, ha say I have a few day break, it's like things are on my soul, I've got to sort them out. And, um,. <clears throat> So the first meditation will be like a, I'll just sort something out, some little problem I had in my mind and it will be uh, feeling better afterwards and then that's more motivation to um, do it again because there's, you know, there's always high you can go in a sense until you get to this point where you're sort of like, you know, <laughs> So yeah, one with all creation, all existence, love. And that's an amazing place to be. And um, the more often you get to that place, the more comfortable it is. And uh, less daunting, um, you know, for the mind, the mind. The mind doesn't really like it much, it's not particularly comfortable, but the heart is very comfortable. Yes. So, um, you know, I hope everyone's well. We have to do it here on Earth. So this is something that says, um, "Come to me." Um, you know why? Why else have a physical existence? You know, if you live on in the spirit world, <clears throat> why bother with a physical experience? Physical experience. Why? Why have this at all? It's not here for no reason. Um, and the reason why it's here is we have to accomplish our... We have to accomplish our transformation while physically on earth. We have a physical manifestation in the universe. It is what's beyond the black hole. That is, each black hole is one of us. We are what's beyond each black hole. And a physical transformation I feel will take place and may have already taken place which would change it from a one-way portal you know anything can only go into a black hole nothing can come out so we'll change it from that to a two-way thing so when that when the soul on the other side of that black hole becomes at one with all existence will then transform and become a, a two-way portal and substance love can travel both ways <clears throat> um, 
<clears throat> so, the reason it needs to happen physically on Earth, because the soul needs to be in the physical universe. But more the re but that could still apply for the spirit world. So it's it's needed because the spirit world, as mentioned in the Bible, the correct translation is not firmament, but a vault. And the vault the spirit world is like in the vault. It's like a waiting place. And sure, once you've gone in the spirit world, in order to come back to earth, your soul does need to grow and and realize this at one moment. But if it's done in the spirit world, the physical universe doesn't change. The black hole does not become a two-way portal. It has to be done on the physical world because you have to be all three. You have to be the, phys the physical, the spiritual and the soul. And the So I haven't been to the spirit world, right? Um, apart from in dreams and stuff. And uh, when you're on the physical world, it's like you've had to work it out for yourself. Nothing has been just handed to you on a plate. You had to get to a position where you were ready to receive the answer. And that's that seeking, that's that desire for more truth of what you are. And so even a soul who goes through the spirit world comes back to the physical world because their brain at the age of one and that isn't um, evolved enough to start sort of that sort of thinking where you're sort of reflective and things that you've done and and also you know your experiences are going to be there and then you need to eat you need to grow that's going to be priority number one so by the time you're sort of 14 you you know you you will have sort of forgotten anything from the previous probably maybe just some remnants um, but anyway you're still going to have to work it out for yourself sure if you are someone who's been all the way through the spirit world and come back it's going to be a lot quicker and simpler than a new soul just being popped in um, not remembering it any experiences from anything before because basically this is the first time you'd had uh, a potential to have awareness of yourself reflective awareness of course when we were animals and stuff we were aware of ourselves but we had we were just sort of executing this DNA and the instinct was there we knew what to do to go and get food and to do and to have relationships and everything else well those relationships it w that would have been a soul thing you know you still would have been connecting with other souls and liking that and wanting to keep that or sometimes it would be confrontational obviously between prey and hunted um, you're going to pray 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 is the hunted hunter and hunted um, yeah, there's going to be confrontational things and obviously God prepared us for our purpose in life has prepared us for a long time given us all we need to succeed in our experience and this is something that I got confirmation earlier that I was Enoch and one of the reasons I've been able to um, sort of go on this spiritual journey and keep managing to get to each destination without too much stumbling and blockages and stagnation is because I've done it before um, when I was Enoch 
and that was that was the the reasoning behind God's choosing to put me where I am today and so I'm still of the belief that I had something done to my physical body which put less restrictions on me uh, staying near to God and obviously you know it might I might be wrong and there's loads of people who have managed to do what I've done but the feeling I get is that I'm the first to do it here on earth so yeah call that what you want so you know I'm, I'm, I mentioned before about um, uh, Yeshua not being quite perfect as um, as he was getting as he was still progressing in his understanding and so when so when we take everything Yeshua says as mm -mm, yep that must be that must be the way we should proceed with caution and one who and I there's nothing else I've seen there's only one thing I've seen at the moment and it's this um, it's this explaining of the parable of the wheat and the darnel. Now, uh, John the Baptist says it first. He says it's wheat and the chaff. It's very succinct. It's out there. He'll be on his threshing floor with his winnowing forks, separating the wheat from the chaff. And um, <coughs> and I'm saying this is scripture. This is the Bible. Is the wheat and the chaff. I include the Quran in that too. Um, definitely. It's wheat and chaff. It's been sown in among it. So it couldn't be got rid of completely. It had to remain because that the wheat there we need it. And um, so the chaff had to remain and that's why we have a brain and we can we can think through things, we can feel the truth on that, we can do whatever. So Yeshua wasn't perfect. He he explained the wheat and the darnel as the wheat being the children of God and the darnel being the children of the evil one. Now, you know, it's just not something I feel is... I've, I've thought about it. i thought, you know, is there children of the evil one? And absolutely not, you know. All humans are children of God. Um, there are no inherently evil ones. People do bad things through, for whatever reasons, but not because they're evil. Now, there may be a type of entity, or not really an entity, but um, it might be a side of God that that has been created by man's sin and disobedience, may have brought some things up back in God. Maybe God isn't completely 100% perfected yet. I kind of think that's unlikely, but I think the most likely thing is is we have our own little devil that we've sort of we if we still think this you know that that there might be something in evil that will sort of have have some sort of thing like I don't know all I'm saying is don't think there's children of the evil one and I think the only way that could be explained is to say um, children are in a sense the product the fruit um, so and and then the evil one is the evil deeds and the, the, the good one are the good deeds and so fruit of the good deeds is this and fruit of the bad deeds is this you know and that will be consumed in a fire absolutely and with Yeshua explained this parable he even says you know there um, the wheat will be taken and saved and and the darnel will be 
but then it, it, he kind of trips up and doubles it and um, you know all stumbling blocks will be removed and then the evil doers sort of thing so he, he even gets it a bit off and I think he was under a lot of pressure that day there was lots of people waiting to hear him speak and you know speaking in parables and the disciples wanted him to explain the parables so you know I mean, he might, you know, he might have been quite knackered and tired out. So, um, part partly my point here is with this is, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff about you know him dying on the cross and that saved us all and lots of people want to try and wonder how how that was and explain it and using other things and Paul himself was trying to explain that. So that's why so many people will quote, quote references to uh, Corinthians and Romans and things like that. Because Paul himself was trying to figure it out. And it's quite apparent in Paul's stuff, especially early on, he's expecting this end time very soon. And then the longer it goes on and it doesn't happen, the more he's weighed down by the chains. So, you know, it what... It, it it hadn't it didn't happen and it didn't happen in the last two thousand years. There's been a, there was there's been ups and downs. There's been resurgences in faith, um, and I think brought along by Saint Francis. And there's a resurgence of faith now, which is very good, because faith is the first step. If you have a look at my last short little video seven colors of love seven spirits of god uh, faith is the first step followed by patience followed by wisdom so there's an order to this followed by mercy followed by justice followed by peace now justice must come before peace followed by goodness. Seven aspects of love. So understanding love more. There's a whole spectrum there and you can mix colours and there may be ones outside of that visible spectrum, x-ray and ultraviolet, who knows. <clears throat> There's always going to be more to learn. We are, we are but babes at this. We are seriously new and that's the most amazing thing is that we belong to an an eternal tree of life an infinite well wow, even i was thinking is it infinite like you know i didn't get to an answer here earlier but um and then just thinking it must be and time is just better oh there's no time but you know there is time because there's progression so and we have a mother and father and they were around before us so it's um but if you could think of some of the biggest numbers with billions and billions and billions of digits that's still not infinity you know when you do 10 to the power of and if that power of number had billions and billions and billions of digits we're talking about some large numbers and the way I get into this infinity feet well, I get the way I get into this feeling at one with the love and the eternal tree, I keep referring to it as, as um, I think about that, you know, the number of universes like us, just beginning, must nearly be infinite. There's so many of these going on, but I bet I bet they're all different. I bet they're all unique and and I thought, well, rather than think about those, perhaps I should think about the six other planets in this universe that are very much gonna be very much like Earth. And however different they may be to us probably more distant universes will only be even more different because we all in this universe got the same mother and father and our mother and father God Jesus has brothers and has kin 
a uh, hundred billion of them, all with their universes, with their new children, and they're going to be different in a different way because they're all from there and 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 just going on and and obviously and just trying not to be arrogant about what could be possible, and, and because you know. You, the 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 head worries when you get into that state that oh my god you know it's all it's all shit you know I've worked it out I'm gonna break the universe <laughs> because I've worked it out it's all a load of shit and the, you know that's obviously a fear and um, I'm I'm I feel pretty sure that I'm I've been able to overcome that you know I've I've got into this feeling where you you know that you you know the answer is to choose to love and 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 luckily well luckily it is it just it's not difficult it's so easy it's it's just there just luckily <laughs> otherwise you know so and that and then and then i suddenly want to connect with mother and father god directly and just feel a little bit safe and and thankfully they are extremely dependable as well um, so it uh, quite a quite a major thing I'm 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 getting used to this um, this state and I'm not saying I'm the only one who's been in this state before I, I can imagine that uh, many you know yoga practitioners uh, Buddhists, monks, and things uh, have been in this state, but I don't know for sure if they've been in this state with the level of understanding I currently have, because it's uh, well, like I say, because I, otherwise they would be able to explain many of the mysteries away, which, as far as I'm aware. We're still, as a, as humanity, searching for. And the ones that don't include a God, don't include our Creator and Mother and Father, with that relationship to us, and also in us, because, well, you see, the love thing, you see, the uh, when you're feeling one with all love, the love is also within you as as your creator and so I'd always felt that the soul the soul was indestructible it was like a heart I thought of it as a hard light of love that could never go out it's that Smith song there is a light and it never goes out I think it goes like that um, this is a minor thing, but for me it's been quite a big thing on my mind, which is my gardens. You know, I've let them to grow natural, and back garden's got a massive bramble, but what's come up is like five or six trees. Uh, there's hawthorn, there's um, cherry, there's... Uh, one I don't know what it is, but it's quite interesting. And there's a few. Well, there's a few more. And there's the really fast growing. Not even quite sure what that is. One. And there's a little rowan. There's a couple. There's a few of the really fast growing ones. Anyway. And you know, on AJ Miller, I didn't mention about someone put their hand up and what about uh, plants like uh, blackberry that like to dominate. And the and AJ was like, oh yeah, well this plants they like to dominate the people, they like to dominate everything. You know, and I was thinking about that and thinking maybe there's some truth. I do, you know, I'm a bit sort of, do like to feel like things are my fault sometimes even, you know, so it can swing both ways, you know. And um, But I... You know, the bramble is most definitely one of these repairing plants, without shadow of a doubt. Because its roots can burrow through anything, they go deep, and they draw up resources. And that's why I had the trees popping up. And um, 
I was thinking, because uh, England are hopefully going to pass a new law in five years' time, f landowners, loaners, landowners and farmers will get paid based on the amount of sort of natural stuff they've got and with public access as well so that people can enjoy it. And I was thinking what would be the best way, you know, think, uh, dig a massive trench and then some side pockets, put some TNT in there and blow it up so that like the deep earth would come up and out and sort of stuff like that. And then I thought, well obviously you know, that's not, wouldn't be enjoyable what about if there's badgers there and stuff like that, that would be horrible. <laughs> Um, and I was thinking about, well, brambles. I mean, within, you know, three years, you you can have a pretty big thing. And what, this is basically digging down and bringing up the nutrients. And it's, it's a bit like a bomb, the way the bramble comes up. And I also noticed that a lot of the berries it grows does seem to try and make them inaccessible. It almost wants to hang on to them so that, you know, the goodness will go back into the ground when they eventually die and break off, you know, it's all that phosphate and stuff and that goodness will go into the ground then. And I've had my bramble there, probably been letting it grow for about seven years, probably. And in the last four or five years it's produced berries, but more and more each year. And last year, just so many, so many, and uh, I couldn't possibly eat them all. And and um, you know, to be honest, only a few are like really good tasting. And those ones have usually been where it's most easy to access it. So it's like smart. It's so I say, hey, yeah, have this one. This one will taste good. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> We're doing something else here. You know, nature's smart. And why no, I had a St. John's wort growing in, I planted it in my front garden once, and that, that you know, seemed to take well and produce lots of yellow flowers and stuff like that, and these little buds it made. And then the fourth year, or some, something like that, it went mad. It was just huge, you know, like loads and loads of flowers just went mad. And then never saw it again, didn't come back again after that. Now, so, when, when the plant has, well, I think in the case of St. John's wort, it was just taken, what it, it wasn't planted where it was supposed to be, you know, it was fish out of water, uh, did what it could and died. But with this bramble, it's grown naturally, it's, it's been there on purpose. Um, it's, I, I do believe it might be in its, you know, it have done its job, nearly, and in which case then it will stop getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it will just gradually sort of um, die and, and break down. And then I'll have all these just lovely trees and then the, and the ground around it will have lots of uh, fertility to grow something beneficial. So, so there you go, Yabu sucks. I like Bramble and I tell you these people who are if they want to, if they want to turn, and, and all the time the bramble's been here, it's attracting wildlife, the birds love it because it's a refuge, and also you can do this with it, you can, once it's sort of come out, you can, if you want, put some sticks up, and train it to, for these branches to go up and high, and you actually have a nice little shelter. Um, because the next year, quite often a few of the branches it will just let die and they go brown. But they stay pretty strong, but they're light. And they make quite a good structure. They actually perform well in the wind. and Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I, I'm not going to say I'm not going to do any more videos because, you know, I'm like, um, as soon as I say that, I'll want to do one. Is it, I don't know if it is a bit of an addiction. I think it probably is. I, uh, I, still, I suppose I just like getting things down. And then I can, I can 
move on to the next thing. But the, by the way, the dealing with the pain um, is going really well. Um, owning it, it's, uh, knowing that it's my mind to deal with, stuff that I've done has helped greatly me tap into what it's about. Because you don't feel it until you feel what's about. And quite often during this, there's different levels of pain, and they're they're a tribute to different things. But so far, you know, it's, I've shoved it all down to my feet, so that's how I feel it. And there was this really hot, searing pain that would usually make me, I, you know, I might have done a bit already, and then I get this really hot, searing pain in my feet, and I think, oh, that's time to quit. But with this new understanding of it, I looked at it and I recognised how it would have been possible that me at the age of one and a half, two, say, you know, would have had this real rage. I've seen it in my, I saw it in my own son when he was, you know, in that terrible twos, that hot searing rage. And I... So I recognised that this was a pain that I would have... This is a feeling I definitely would have gone... Bleh. You know, if I'm getting told off for being like that and emotional pressure for being like that, which you would, you know, you'd want to suppress it. you want to put it away. So I was able to feel some of that. And uh, I was in like... Uh, it left me in... I felt near to this state before, but just a, a more of a whiteness, nearly, nearly in a complete white room, <laughs> if you like, not quite that clear. But and the and the and the, and the buzzing and the glowing, and, and I was quite calm with it. I was I was practically enjoying it, and uh, that's what I'm saying. Becoming more comfortable in these higher states and I do believe transformation is going on so I will keep doing it I also want to say that and there's, I suppose it's a bit pointless saying this on YouTube but you know I become more aware of those you know there's more people not on YouTube than on YouTube there's still people more there's still more people offline than online and um, you know, I want to connect with as many people as possible, and I think the way isn't through YouTube as such, but is more through meditation. And I mean, sure, you need to connect with people, but I think if there's someone else in the world meditating at the same time, as a connection is possible, and you can get to know someone that way through having had the feeling first. But yeah. Okay, so I think I said what I wanted to say. And, uh, good luck, whatever you do. And, uh, much love. Much love.